think that might have been uh, actually an opening for a boat to unload. Unload the, the uh, limestone directly into the lime kiln, but a bit of conjecture, we don't really know. This here is the modern day entrance to a historic tunnel. This is called the Tipton Portal. The tunnel itself is called Lord Ward's Tunnel. Now Lord Ward, he was the Earl of Dudley in 1775. He commissioned this tunnel to service his limestone caverns beneath Dudley Castle Hill and the Wren's Nest Hill. And it constructed by a team of navigators, otherwise known nowadays as navvies. Took them three years to complete. They didn't dig from either end, they actually dug from the surface. They dug service shafts every 30 to 40 feet, and when they got down to a prescribed depth, they then put their ear to the wall. They listened to the sound of metal tooling hitting the rock in the next service shaft, and they dug towards that sound. Whilst digging through, they also bricklined it, as you can see. They laid the bricks until they couldn't reach any higher. Then they would put a big wooden beam across called a footlock. And they would sat up, sit on that footlock and probably stand on it, carry on laying the bricks, and eventually they got to the shape of the tunnel that we see today. They then removed the footlock, but they left the square holes in the wall open where the footlock sat. For the simple reason they thought that when it rained, the amount of water that would work its way down through the earth behind them from the walls would create so much pressure that it would cause the walls to collapse inwards. It's obviously didn't, so it's all still here. But it gives you an idea now what's behind the walls, but by now you'll all have noticed there is a secretion coming down the walls, some of it quite thickly ripped. It also appears to be oozing out of the square holes. This is limestone calcite. The same material produces stalactites and stalagmites. If you don't know the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite, the way I always remember it is that types always come down. There's also a coloration. means the water has actually gone through different minerals. And really positive the mineral is a calcite. If you see, as an example, any little dark brown, it means the water's gone through ironstone. Picked up the uh, mineral of ironstone. On its journey through the soil, it's gone rusty. And the rusty ironstone's been deposited in the calcite from the sinker bay. Now, the front end of the boat, if you start to look up, you'll see there is one of the service shafts that's left open to us. There are only three on the whole system. Unfortunately, I've only seen two today. There's some more about up at this point. It's a coal directly up that shaft. And that coal fed a steam operated pump house on top of the hill, which in turn serviced what they call the flooded mine. Now, as you're making our way across Shirtsville Basin here, if you look to the left hand side of the boat, set back in the hillside, that is the flooded mine. The other side of our uh, little bit of a graveyard. Now, uh, to give you an idea of working conditions in the 1700s, the men worked in the flooded mine there 14 hours a day, six days a week. Knee deep in water by candlelight, because we were actually, we just passed through what was a subterranean loading basin. And as we make our way to Castle Hill Basin, that was also subterranean. The, light, the rooms were only taken off in the 1800s, mid 1800s, and it provided rock for the roads in the local area. They were paid the grand total of four shillings and sixpence of the privilege to work in there. Whether that was a good wage or not, I don't know. Now the Castle Mill Basin, look to the right hand corner there, you'll see a gated entrance. And that gated entrance is the entrance to the Wren's Nest Tunnel. Now the Wren's Nest Tunnel stretches for two thirds of a mile into the hill. Goes to an area called the Step Shaft, into a cavern called the Seven Sisters. Now the Seven Sisters, large enough to get 15 of these boats in side by side. That's as far as it goes. You have to come back here to get out again. It doesn't go right the way through the hill. There we are. Actually aiming for the 89 tunnel. This uh, reasonably modern looking brick wall in front of us. To the right, the entrance there is the main tunnel. We'll come out of there in about 35 minutes. To the left, little triangular shaped hole. It's called the mud hole. Or it used to be. And its name dramatically changed in the 1950s. It was worked out in the early 1800s and abandoned. Children playing in there. And just after the Second World War, children playing in there actually found a body. They didn't know who it was. Well, the police were called. They didn't know who it was, what it was, how long it had been there, what age it was. 
but how do you demise them, even to this day? They don't know the identity of the person that was found in there. Mind you, they didn't have a rough idea what it was when they found to remove the body, because they turned it over and found that his mouth was wide open. I don't believe they put it on the paperwork, it was a woman. <laughs> well, that's true, we're not going to have really now. But anyway, we've just gone through the IQ, or well, starting through the IQ9 tunnel, it looks a little bit like an egg box to start with. Concrete section and the body together. Straight up all shot freeze. But now we're actually in a natural tunnel. It was a crack. They found it in the hillside after they excavated it. And uh, they could walk along it. They found it. All those trees where they wanted to go. So it was a little bit of contention, a little bit of few meetings. A bit of deliberation, they decided, yeah, we'll make it wider and slightly deeper. This is what they did. Quicker, cheaper, certainly easier. Hey, Presto, this is a natural tunnel. And these things are the seeming tunnel. You'll stop in there for about five, five or six minutes. You'll have a film showing there on the left hand side. I'll uh, more than those over in there. If you're on the right hand side, you can stand up, watch the film, down, sit there and twist your back and everything like that. But uh, I'll just maneuver the boat into the cabin there and uh, give you a few moments just to uh, have a quick look around, have a look at the framework which is going through the tunnel. Uh, well, I shall continue afterwards. Do you know the atmosphere? Turn the lights off. 